the slope deflection equation can also be used to analyze indeterminate frames. But to do so, we must distinguish between side sway frames and side sway inhibited frames, those that cannot side sway, because the approach is different in each case. For this problem, we'll limit ourselves to using the slope deflection equation to analyze an indeterminate frame that cannot side sway. The key concepts we'll use are writing slope deflection equations for frame segments and writing moment equilibrium equations at a node. And here's our indeterminate frame. We have a fixed support at A, a pinned support at C, and the internal joint at B is fixed, or a rigid connection. We are going to determine the moments at the ends of each member of the frame. And we'll note that the modulus elasticity is that of steel for each of the members. Now the approach will follow. We'll start by approximating the answer. so that we have a sense of the solution before we perform the lengthy calculations. When we're all done using the slope deflection analysis method, we're going to want to be able to evaluate the reasonableness of our results, and this approximation will help us do so. The second step in the start of the slope deflection method is to find the fixed end moments. Then, we will write the slope deflection equations but that won't provide us with sufficient equations to solve for all the unknowns so we'll need to use equilibrium at an internal node to get the remaining equations. With that information, we'll be ready to calculate all the rest of the moments. And then we will compare with our approximation. So let's begin by approximating the answer. And to do that, let's take a look at what happens if we consider each of the two loads, the uniform distributed load and the horizontal load, acting independently. I can sketch the elastic curve, that is the deflected shape, if there's just the uniform distributed load, and we'll get something like that. If we consider just the horizontal load, the elastic curve, looks something like this. Since curvature is indicative of the sense or the sign of the moment, we see that the different curvatures mean that the moments caused by each of the loads independently 
will be of opposite sign and will cancel. That makes it a little bit easier to approximate things because it'll let us find upper bound limits. So let's start by approximating segment BC as the following. So roller support at the right end and instead of a fixed connection that will rotate some, let's take it as a fixed support that will not rotate at all. We have the uniform distributed load two kips per linear foot and the unknown moment reaction at the end BC and our beam is 12 feet long. Well, This situation looks exactly like one of the situations we have inside the back cover of our text which is this one and so the reaction at the fixed support end of a beam with uniform distributed load and roller at the other end is omega L squared over 8. But the moment reaction is counterclockwise and for slope deflection we'll assume it is clockwise. So from our formula in the back cover of the textbook the moment at BC is minus omega L squared over 8, which equals minus the 2 kips per linear foot, 12 feet squared over 8, and that equals a minus 36 foot kips. Whereas we had considered it to be clockwise, it's actually in the other, other direction. Now notice, this is an upper bound approximation. Why is it an upper bound? Well, this assumes NB is unable to rotate, but in reality it will. and we saw that these two cause the moments to cancel and so this is an upper bound because it ignores the 4 kip concentrated horizontal force now let's approximate AB as being fixed on both ends even though end B can rotate. And so we have 8 feet to the point where the lateral force is applied and then eight more feet to the end. And the moment reaction at A comes from this situation shown on the inside back cover of our text. So we have the moment AB is in the opposite direction as it's shown on the inside back cover and that's minus PL over 8 that equals a minus 4 kip applied load 16 feet overall length divided by 8 so that equals a minus 8 foot kips and it's not clockwise as drawn but actually the other way.
this should also be an upper bound. Although since this end can rotate some, this end is truly fixed, it will probably pick up more moment if there was only the four kips, but we're totally neglecting the impact of this one. So we'll say it's probably an upper bound. Good, now we have something to compare against once we have performed our slope deflection analysis of the frame so that we can determine whether our slope deflection results are reasonable. So to begin the slope deflection analysis process, we need to find our fixed end moments. And as we look at our structure, we'll draw all of our fixed end moments clockwise. That's to be consistent with our slope deflection equation. And because we have a fixed support at A, we'll get a fixed end moment AB. Since we have continuous member here, or the other way to look at it is a fixed joint, we'll have fixed end moment at the other end. and in the other member. But since this is a pin, there will be no fixed end moment here. So we're going to calculate the fixed end moment for AB first. We have a beam that is fixed, fixed, with a point load in the middle, which is this situation, which you've already calculated the PL over 8 value and found that at the A end it's minus 8 foot kips. And positive would have been clockwise. We see from the inside front cover because of the symmetry of the loading the fixed end moment at the other end is PL over 8, but a positive. Therefore, it is 8 foot kips. It is clockwise. Now for the other member. We have fixed at one end, roller or pin at the other, uniform distributed load, that is this case from the inside back cover. And we already calculated the omega L squared over 8 and found it to be a minus 36 foot kips at B. Now we're ready for step 3 which is writing the slope deflection equations. Let's start with member AB. Since that member is fixed or continuous at both ends. We'll use equation 11-8 from our text, which means we'll get moment AB is 2EI, and this is 
moment of inertia for member AB over the length of AB, two times the near node slope, and slope A is zero because it's a fixed support. I'll point out that the relative displacement of A and B is zero. The relative displacement B to C is zero. And the slope at C we don't know because that's pinned. So coming back to our slope deflection equation, we have two times the near slope, slope at A, and that's zero, plus the far slope, theta B, minus three times the relative displacement, which is zero. And we add the fixed end moment for AB, which we saw was negative eight foot kips. Consolidate terms, we get two EI over L theta B minus eight foot kips. We'll call this equation one. The moment at the other end of the frame member is calculated by the same formula, 2EI, again it's still member AB, only now the near node slope is theta B. We'll add in the far node slope, theta A, which is zero. And we'll subtract three times the relative displacement, which is zero. We'll add in the fixed end moment, which was a positive eight foot kips. Consolidate terms, and we get four EI over L theta B plus eight foot kips. And that we'll call equation two. Now remember BC is pinned at one end. And that so in this case we'll use equation 11-10 for the slope deflection equation. And so the moment is given by 3 EI, and this time it's I for member BC, divided by the length of member BC. The near node slope, which is theta B, minus the relative displacement which is zero, and we add in the fixed end moment, which we found to be negative 36 foot kips. Consolidate terms, we get three EI over the length, theta B, minus 36 foot kips. We'll call this equation three. And since we have only three equations, but four unknowns, the three moments and the slope at B, we still need another equation. To get that next equation, we'll use equilibrium. And to do that, we'll draw a free body diagram of the internal node, B. And we'll cut it so that it's infinitely short, so that the shears act through a distance of essentially zero. 
have the moment BC and the moment BA. Now notice I've drawn these counterclockwise, but in slope deflection we always draw our moments clockwise. This is because we always draw them clockwise on the ends of the beam member or the frame member. Newton's third law says that on this little piece that is the node in between the members, the moments must be equal and opposite, so we'll draw them counterclockwise. If I apply moment equilibrium, I'll sum moments about point B. I'll choose counterclockwise as positive since that's the direction all the moments are drawn. We have moment BA plus moment BC add up to zero. This is our fourth equation. So let's substitute equations 2 and 3, the equation for the moment BA, the equation for the moment BC, into this equilibrium equation, and we'll find that 0 equals the moment at BA, which we said looked like this, 4 E I A B over the length of A B times the slope at B plus eight foot kips plus the moment B C which we found to express this way three E I this time for member BC over L, the length of BC, times the slope at B, minus 36 foot kips. And if we consolidate terms, get a 4EI for member AB over the length of member AB, plus a 3EI for member AB over the length, or BC rather, over the length of member BC. All of that times the slope at B, and that equals, we'll combine these two, move them to the other side. We have a positive 28 foot kips. So if we solve this for theta B, we have 28 foot kips divided by 4 times the 29,000 KSI times the moment of inertia of member AB, which is 550 inches to the fourth. Let's go ahead and make this parentheses and this brackets divided by the length 16 feet. Well, kips per square inch times inches to the fourth gives me kip inches squared over feet. My numerator's in foot kips, so let's get the numerator of this part into feet. So we'll multiply it by feet divided by 12 inches squared. We'll add the 3 times the modulus of elasticity, 29,000 KSI. The moment of inertia of member BC, 800 inches to the fourth times our conversion all of that divided by the 12 foot length of member BC and our bracket, and we'll put in our divided by symbol. Evaluate all of that and we get a positive 4.12 
times 10 to the negative fourth radians. And note that positive means it will be a clockwise rotation of node B. Now we're ready for step five, where we calculate the moments. To do that, we'll substitute the value we calculated for the slope at B into equations 1, 2, and 3. So we get, for the moment AB, equation 1 looked like this, 2EI for member AB over the length AB times the slope at B minus 8 foot kips. And so if we, subs if we put the variables in, we get 2 times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia of member AB. Our units are not going to match unless we convert, and so we'll convert the numerator to feet. And the length of member AB, 16 feet. Multiplied by the slope at B, which we calculated to be 4.12 times 10 to the minus fourth minus the 8 foot kips. And together all of that equals 5.7 foot kips minus the 8 foot kips, which gives us a net of a minus 2.3 foot kips moment at A. It's negative positive would have been clockwise. Now the other end of that same element from the frame. That's calculated from this equation. 4 EI for member AB over the length of member AB, the slope at B, plus the eight foot kips. Substitute in for the known quantities. We get four, not two, four times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia for member AB. We'll convert units. divided by 16 feet times the slope at B plus the 8 foot kips which gives us 11.41 foot kips plus 8 foot kips which gives me a positive 19.41 foot kips it is in the clockwise direction. Now our last moment, BC, whose expression is this one, equation 3. 3 EI for member BC over the length of member BC times the slope at B, minus 36 foot kips. So we have 3 times the modulus of elasticity, KSI, the moment of inertia for member BC, 800 inches to the fourth, our unit conversion
over the length of member BC, which is 12 feet, times the slope at B, 4.12 times 10 to the minus 4 minus the 36 foot kips, which came from the fixed end moment. That gives us a 16.59 foot kips minus the 36 gives us a net minus 19.41 foot kips which is exactly the same but opposite sign to MBA which we would expect because there are only two members framing into node B and there's no applied couple moment there's no fixed support there. So that provides a good intermediate check. Now for step six. Let's evaluate the reasonableness of our results by comparing them with our approximation. If we look back, we approximated the moment AB to be a minus 8 foot kips, where positive is clockwise. We expect that to be an upper bound. The moment we calculated using the slope deflection analysis method turned out to be a minus 2.3 foot kips where clockwise is positive. So this is on the order of magnitude of our approximation and we said our approximation would be an upper limit so this number seems reasonable the moment at B in calculated in the beam we said would be approximately negative 36 foot kips where clockwise is positive we said this will also be an upper bound When we applied slope deflection analysis, we found the moment it be to be negative 19.41 foot kips, where clockwise is positive. Again, our order of magnitudes match just fine. We said this will be an upper bound, and we calculated a quantity that is smaller. So this also appears to be a reasonable result. Smaller as anticipated. Now let's go back and review the process we followed. We started by considering each of the loads applied separately and we sketched the elastic curve or deflected shape we would anticipate due to each of the loads acting independently and discovered that we expect the moment due to the two loads to cancel somewhat. So we use that along with idealizing node B as actually a fixed support and we came up with upper bound limits on what we expected our moment to be at BC and AB. We used information from the inside front cover, excuse me, inside back cover of our text to calculate the fixed end moments we would need for slope deflection analysis. Then we wrote the slope deflection equations for the three moments inside the frame. But that left us with three equations and four unknowns. So we wrote an equilibrium equation at the interior node B. We then substituted two of the previous equations into the equilibrium equation and solved 
for the unknown slope at node B. We then used that slope in the three equations to obtain the three moments and we compared those results with our approximation from the beginning. As expected, the calculated results or the results from the slope defection analysis were smaller than our approximate results but they were of the same order of magnitude, same direction. So we conclude that we have reasonably predicted the moments inside the frame due to the shown loads. Well done.